beautiful night. So in the workshop, let me just show you what I got going on and what's coming next. So this is a basic rundown of all the items. This is my roadmap I'm making for myself. This is for the Garmin install, and this is what we're going to be doing over the next couple of months, I'm sure. Especially since I only get about a day, a week, maybe a day and a half a week to uh, to work on this stuff. But this is the next items that we're going to be doing. And these are all the items. So, I'm just going to go through these one by one. Talk about them, I guess. And... Uh, lay out the road map ahead and what you know I'm obviously covering the installs on this on video I am not a marine electronics expert so a lot of the stuff I'll be learning about for the first time especially autopilot and autopilot operation because with these new systems you know if, uh, if you pick all Garmin there's a lot of interconnectability we're all any modern system there's a lot of interconnectability in how they operate and they get very fancy in how they operate you probably don't even know how these things operate until you get it installed and start playing with it there's not much information online especially about the autopilots let's just go over here so this one here is the 923 xsv uh, with sonar capability we've got two of those and they are going to go one on the upper helm and one on the lower helm and I've already got the one on the lower helm installed so that that's obviously a pretty easy job it's just essentially power and mounting so that's already done the upper helm I gotta get that installed next so then I can start routing all the stuff to it and uh, building the NMEA 2000 uh, network so uh, that's one component now it does have uh, this uh, let's see where is it um, where's the box for this right there it said GT15M1H transducer, 8 pin in hole transducer, and this is the transducer, and it gets installed in the bottom of the hull, uh, as close to center as you can get it. Um, but of course, the hole kind of goes down at an angle, and so you have these rings here that are sealed on the bottom here with. Uh, some type of sealant. They recommend silicone, but I, I really hate silicone. Seems like once you install silicone, it, it, it's very difficult to remove uh, and leaves like a slick surface afterwards. So probably be done with some kind of Cicaflex or a light duty um, 3M product like 4000 or 4200, something like that, Fast Cure. But you select the, uh, the place in the hole that you want to install this and it should correspond to the hole angle um, you know, like if the center line is here and the whole angle is here, you know, what's the dead rise going off the center line? And uh, you pick out the different uh, different angles. So you've got a couple options here. So you will just pick out the one that you want and uh, seal this in there. And then you fill this full of uh, antifreeze is what they recommend. I think there's a couple other types of fluids that you can use. And then when you put this in, the fluid should overflow and uh, it will transmit its uh, sound waves through the fluid, through the hull, into the uh, water, and then obviously back up to here. And uh, it goes through the hull, but they do work. I've installed that in a couple boats. It does work as long as you have no delaminations in the hull or bubbles in the hull or something on the other side. So um, there's a couple ways to ensure before you do a final ins installation that you're in the right spot. Uh, some testing to be done but that is the transducer that I'll be using um, now to also couple with the 923 XSV uh, and the autopilot I have the GHC 50 which is all touchscreen and a GHC 20 which is over here which is actually buttons this is old school this is new school um, this one, I have a, a video that I just powered both of these up and showed the differences. This one's real fancy, real pretty, and of course touch screen, including the button. Um, this on and off button is a regular button still. And one of the failure items, one of the common failure items on Garmin and, and anything uh, of electronic equipment is the 
on off button a lot of times will go bad so on this one it's a touch screen button so this should not go bad any longer that's the same with the newer um, chart plotter so that's that's kind of a, a step up in my opinion so um, this one is going to go on the upper helm because on the upper helm you could get some rain some salt spray some other things uh, and although they say they always say in the manuals and the advertising that these touch screens for this too are work with wet fingers and they do generally but they're a lot of times they just don't work perfectly with wet fingers depending how wet they are or how wet the screen is um, so for the exposed area this is going to be in the upper helm where it's just got real tactile buttons no touch screen should be a little bit easier to operate uh, this fancy one's going to go in the lower helm it's more protected um, it's not going to get wet uh, and it should fit a little bit better because it's going to go above the helm uh, in the overhead uh, kind of drop down space there and it's all wood so those are the two uh, autopilot control heads one upper helm one lower helm um, let's see what else we got here's the uh, some of the components for the um, autopilot uh, also I got this let me see if I can get this over here without dropping it here this thing's heavy as hell So this big sucker right here is big. This is a two liter pump for the autopilot. Initially, I had a pump in my boat, uh, and it was an old school pump. It's supposed to be a good pump. I actually tested it. It does work. It's a reversing pump, so it should work with this uh, uh, Garmin autopilot system. Um, and because I was gonna use the old pump, I actually got the GRF-10 rudder feedback sensor which if you don't use the Garmin pump, you need a rudder feedback sensor. Uh, so I had bought that. But then after I bought all this stuff, I'm like, you know, I got all this stuff. Why would I use uh, an old pump that's essentially just taking a, a reversing voltage signal um, and then it requires feedback with the rudder feedback. And I'm sure it'll work, but there is some unique features on the Garmin pumps. And when you hook this up and it's all plug and play, you actually don't need the rudder feedback sensor from what I understand now if you do use a Garmin pump and you still use the rudder feedback sensor I think it like ups the level of control and detail so uh, you know that that should work better um, I'm gonna install it and see how it works um, I think it should work a little bit better uh, but uh, but apparently it's not necessary if you use a Garmin pump um, also for the Let's see here. Also for the uh, autopilot, I got this, which is the newest remote. Um, press any button. And it has some information on it, speed over ground, heading, blah, blah, blah. Obviously it's not paired here. Um, but it has some neat features. Uh, you can uh, do a lot of um, control, almost like the one of these control heads here with this while you're on autopilot wearing it you know around your neck or whatever but it has several features where you can push this but I think it's this button push this button and then physically point the autopilot in the direction that you want and it will steer the boat in that direction um, I thought that was pretty cool uh, the uh, a lot of people said that they actually steer the boat with this so even even just regularly I think in in like manual mode I think they do 75% of the steering in the boat obviously probably in more open water not in the ICW or some you know closed area but they do a lot of the steering of the boat with this unit which is actually kinda cool um, you know you got a big steering wheel that's obviously just a hydraulic pump you grab that big giant steering steering wheel and you have gotta go uh, you know six turns lock to lock to, to turn the boat but if you have a big old two liter pump like that and you're just essentially making the pump turn the rudder um, I'll bet you get some pretty good response we'll see I've, I've uh, talked to several people that just steer their boat with this sucker so I don't know about that but we'll see if it works good why not so um, now also I opted for the shadow drive shadow drive is actually a feature for the autopilot 
um, and what it does uh, when you're underway and autopilot is engaged um, if you come up on a crab pot or a log or a, a person or another boat whatever a kayaker and you need to take emergency evasive maneuvers you don't have to hit the autopilot disengage button or uh, you know anything else you can just grab the wheel and turn it um, and that's really what the way it should be done because that's your first reaction is to grab the wheel and turn it and if you don't have something like this and don't disengage the autopilot it's going to always want to turn you back um, once you stop giving input or overriding it it's going to fight you the whole way so I, I believe what's in here is probably some kind of gate switch where the pressure goes this way and it activates a switch pressure goes this way it activates a switch uh, but then returns to center when uh, no fluid is is uh, traveling so this has to be installed in a specific area of the hydraulic system um, and it has to be installed horizontally like this I think if you install it like that that little gate switch in there um, probably doesn't work as effectively because one side now has gravity acting on it all the time so I think the install of this is very important um, don't use Teflon tape because I'm sure if it got in there and bound up that mechanism then it also wouldn't work or would stick it in one direction uh, a lot of people report that uh, this gives them a little bit of problems a lot of people report that it works fantastically um, we'll see we'll test it and we'll see how it works um, so if you grab the wheel and take evasive maneuvers and turn it um, and then you let go of the wheel and then this returns to center I suppose then uh, the uh, autopilot will resume back on course now, I don't know if it like tries to make a hard steer back on the magenta line or if it goes to the next waypoint um, I think that's actually programmable and how 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 that's going to be done but we'll have to read the manual those are the types of things that we'll have to learn so uh, let's see what else we got um, this is a GMS 10 this was to connect uh, basically chart plotter to chart plotter with an with their Garmin Ethernet cables um, for high-speed data or lots of data and the reason why I bought this was because I was going to hook up four MFDs. I had some old 741 XSVs that I was going to hook up, two up top, two down below. Um, and if you're going to hook up four chart plotters, um, they have to be hooked up with the Ethernet, I believe. Um, like this one and the one that's going to be uh, on the lower helm will have to have that direct uh, link on it, which is... Uh, the network cable which is I think is this one let me see so yeah that big cable and that I believe will carry much more data than the NMEA 2000 so I don't think that you can uh, put four chart plotters on an NMEA 2000 network I think that for instance if this one has which is what I have here so if this one has the Navionics Vision Plus charts loaded on it and you don't want to get two of these or four of these that's a lot of data in there so you need that Ethernet cable to transmit that high-speed data with that large amount of data for use on other on the remaining other chart plotters uh, if you want to be able to use that stuff on other chart plotters <clears throat> at least that's the way I understand it so far if that's not right obviously I'll be figuring that out in the future or in the comments feel free to if any of this is wrong actually definitely comment because again I'll be learning this as I go so uh, and where I've gotten this information is some from Garmin some from people that do installs some from the internet we'll find out what's true what's not but if you know something or something that I'm saying here is not correct by all means please comment to correct correct the record correct me and correct it for everybody else that might see this video or uh, be installing their own stuff also got the uh, Fusion. This is the RA210, I believe. And along with a set of these 6.5 speakers, actually two sets of those. One set's uh, already installed in the boat. This is already installed in the boat, along with a small subwoofer that's non-Garmin, just to get a little bit of extra bass. But I really, really like this Fusion audio stuff. It's excellent. Um, sounds fantastic. It's one of the best sounding stereos 
that I've I've heard, especially for a boat or um, or car or anything like that. And I have a lot of audio equipment. I have some JBL L7, no L5s back there, and a car ramp and various other things. So I like my good audio, and this was very very impressive. In addition, I got these little things. These are wireless pucks. They're not very expensive, and you put them on with two-way tape or Velcro or something like that. They couple um, to repair with the stereo and then you just put these wherever you want and they're a very simple operation you know they just have uh, audio up audio down song a couple other um like source i think a couple other uh, options there but generally i just go to the next song or turn the volume up or down from them and uh they're very very simple and, and work very very well let's see here what else we got we got this which is the garmin wireless i believe it's wi-fi whoops sorry about that i believe it's wi-fi the gc 100 marine camera now this does have i think infrared uh, emitters in here so it can see in darkness not long distances but say in an engine room or something like that uh, or maybe up close uh you know out in the open in darkness but not too far um i don't even know where i'm going to put this yet I think I'm going to put it in the engine room, but I might have it off the back of the boat uh, for when I'm up on the, the helm and maybe backing in or something. I can put it on the screen or whatever. Uh, so I, I don't know, but I, I may put it in the engine room as well. So that way you can kind of do continuous engine room checks while you're underway. Um, maybe put it uh, at the front of the engine to where you can see below the engine and above the engine and around the engine see if there's any smoke or any fluid leaking into the bilge that'd be nice um, and if I like it if it's sharp enough and, and you can actually get useful images out of it then uh, I may get another one maybe maybe more maybe we'll get two or three of them I'm not sure if they make the mission easier and safer then uh, then it's all good as far as I'm concerned um, what else oh here's another thing so this is this is something I'll definitely like. Okay, so, you know, you got the Vision Plus, and I always get the chip. Uh, you can do a direct download, but I always want the physical chip in case I switch chart plotters or whatever. Um, so there is a chip that was purchased, and then that chip goes in here, right here. And it's actually in there. So that's in the back of the unit. So if I change chips or take that chip out, or sometimes people will do updates using these um, data cards, um, and they will do the update at their home computer and then take it to the boat and just put it in the slot and do the update that way. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it with your phone wirelessly, uh, which is the way I've been doing it. But I could see that in, under certain circumstances maybe you'd have to do that or who knows what but since that would be so difficult to get to in the back of that they Garmin sells this which is uh, just a little unit that can be mounted in the dash very small and then when you open it it's got two card slots so anyways this should be a uh, nice addition to make things much simpler because if there was a circumstance where I had to get a card in that sucker it'd be, be ridiculous so this should be make it much easier um, and then the last thing actually is just this uh, radar I got the radar and it's not the fancy one it's actually the it was a combo that I bought another GPS 923 XSV and GMR 18 HD plus radar combo so I got a decent price on it but now I'm thinking I should have got the next one upgraded because I th I was mistaken when I bought this that this was a Doppler radar or had the uh, capabilities to tell you when something was coming at you uh, or moving away by the color and a few other features the next one up and the next one up only would have been a couple hundred dollars so I really should have got that I was thinking about selling this one but again this for what the type of cruising we're going to be doing this is just going to be a nice to have item so if i find myself using it a lot 
and uh, really like it and maybe I'll sell this one recoup a little bit of the cost and then uh, get a fancy upgrade um, I shoot I still have to make a, a mast or something to mount this I have nothing to mount it to so uh, got a couple things to do and then I also have a uh, flow scan meter to install I actually have a flow scan on there already uh, but it's just a needle type and it's not useful enough to give me the accurate numbers that I want I mean obviously you guys may have seen the previous videos where I have several videos kind of in on a quest for a very good tachometer signal where I use this little rig right here with the uh, Hall effect sensor and a drill and got some signals and figured out what would work and uh, finally settled on the Aetna engineering tachometer which I absolutely love but I forgot sitting up on the shelf that I had this flow scan digital oops flow scan digital uh, a meter fuel flow meter so I think I'm probably gonna end up putting this one in there because I already have the flow scan um, transducers installed and it's all wired up to the helm so all I need to do is take that one gauge out now, I could leave the engineering in place and just put this where the the uh, fl flow scan is currently with a needle I would have then two tachometers but I would have this information this information and that information so and a spare tachometer in case one of them crap the bed but uh, I don't think I'm gonna I don't know I gotta think about that let me know what you think so let's see here just a pile pile of stuff took me like a year to get all this stuff a little bit at a time so anyways that's where we're at this is what we got and uh, it's gonna take a little while to install um, so if you're not a subscriber already go ahead and subscribe because we're gonna be doing a lot of work on all this stuff and I'll share everything that I learn little tricks whatever um, anything I figure out or basic operation of all this stuff and I'll make sure that I uh, put it in the video so that it's a resource that everybody can use including myself because uh, this is going to cover a lot of ground so I think that's it it's now 2023 so this is my project for 2023 happy new year